Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be looking at this sum here. It's a sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 1 over pi, where pi is the ith prime number. So it's the sum of the reciprocals of the prime. So 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 5, plus 1 over 7, and so on. Now firstly, there are infinitely many primes, we know that, and I've made a video for that, a link for that will be in the description below. Uh, so this thing here is indeed an infinite series, and also um, it looks very similar to the harmonic series, which we know diverges. In fact, I made two videos about that, I'll leave link for, links for those in the description as well. Uh, now we know the harmonic series diverges, but each term here is less than uh, the, harmonic, the corresponding term in the harmonic series, so we can't just use a direct comparison to show that this diverges. And also, we know that the harmonic series diverges really, really slowly. So perhaps there is a chance that this thing here converges, because this is sort of smaller, in, in some respect, to the harmonic series. But today, I'm going to prove that this thing here diverges. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so I claim that this thing diverges, and to prove that, I'm going to use contradiction. So suppose the sum of the reciprocals of the primes converges. Okay, well then that means that there exists some natural number n, such that the sum from i equals n plus 1 to infinity of 1 over pi is less than 1. Okay, and that sort of follows from the fact that this, if I look at the sequence, the sum from i equals 1, to n, if I define this thing here, Sn, to be 1 over, the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over pi, so the nth partial sum of our series, then this Sn is a monotonic increasing function, and also uh, we're assuming that uh, this series here converges, so Sn converges to a limit, and then by sort of the, uh, the approximation property, that means for any epsilon bigger than 0, I can give you some capital N for which uh, Sn eventually is uh, at most epsilon difference from your limit, and thus this thing holds in the case epsilon equals 1. Okay, so there exists some natural number n, so that if I go far along, uh, deep down enough along my series here, everything to the right-hand side will sum up to at most 1, or strictly less than 1. Great. So let's get rid of this. And I'm going to call this sum here x. So x is this number, which is less than 1. Okay, and I guess also I should say that it's positive, so it's between 0 and 1. So S is, I'm now going to define this series to be x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the floor, x to the 4 plus so on. Now this is a geometric series, and of course this converges because x is between 0 and 1. So this thing here, in fact, equals x over 1 minus x. Now this actually doesn't matter for the problem today, uh, but just throw it in, why not? But we know that this thing here converges. Also, each term in this sequence here is positive or, or strictly non-negative, or, or non-negative. But they're all positive because each of the pi's are positive. This number here is positive, uh, and x to the n is therefore positive as well. So that means I can rearrange these terms, and it will still it won't affect the value of the sum. Okay. Now I make this claim here that this number here. is eventually in, is, is somewhere in this summation here. So firstly, what is this thing here? i is just some arbitrary natural number, and then p1 all the way up to p capital N are the first capital N prime numbers, of course. Now, why do I claim that this number is in here? Well, firstly, look at this number on the denominator. It's certainly a positive integer, and thus has some prime factorization. But notice this, this bit here of the sum is congruent to zero mod p1, i.e. p1 divides this thing here, which is clear, because p1 is in its factorization. But then because I'm adding 1, this whole thing is going to be congruent to 1 mod p1. Similarly, this whole thing is going to be congruent to 1 mod p2, and also mod p3, and also all the way up to mod pn. In other words, if I try and divide this number by p1, p2, or any number up, any of the first capital N prime numbers, I'm always going to be left with the remainder 1. So in other words, none of the first N prime numbers divide this number, so when I look at the prime factorization of this number here, it's going to involve primes which are at least uh, the n plus 1 for prime. Okay, so in other words, I can rewrite this, use a different pen, in the form 1 over p n plus 1 to the alpha 1 times p n plus 2 to the alpha 2 times dot dot dot, all the way up to p n plus some k to the alpha k. 
Okay, so all of the prime numbers that divide this number here are going to be at least the n plus 1 prime number. Great. Now what I'm going to do is define alpha to be alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus dot 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 all the way up to alpha k. Okay, cool. Now I claim that this thing here is somewhere in this sum here. Well, why is that the case? Because if I look at x to the alpha, okay, that is precisely this thing here multiplied by itself alpha times. So that's 1 over p n plus 1 plus 1 over p n plus 2 plus dot 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 1 over p n plus 1 times 1 over p n plus 2 plus dot 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 and each of these brackets are uh, alpha times. Okay? Great. So that's precisely what x to the alpha is and I want to show that this thing here is certainly in here. Well, that's quite, I guess, quite immediate. If I look at the first alpha 1 brackets, then I, and I take the first term from there, so that's 1 over pn plus 1, 1 over pn plus 1, and I look at the first alpha 1 bracket, then I'm going to get 1 over pn plus 1 to the alpha 1. And then for the next alpha 2 brackets, I look at the second term, so then I'm going to be multiplying by 1 over pn plus 2 to the alpha 2, and I can continue in this manner and certainly show, oh, I don't mean equal, sorry, uh, but this thing here, and then carry on up to alpha k, this thing here is certainly going to be in this expansion somewhere. Okay, so this term here, or in other words, this term here, is certainly in the x alpha expansion, but in particular it's also in this s expansion. So, then it follows that the sum, so the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of this thing here, is going to be less than or equal to s. Okay, and the reason for that is because each of these terms here occurs somewhere in this expansion here, and we, we, can, we don't have to worry about rearrangement or things diverging, because this thing here converges, each of these, term here, each of these terms here go, falls in here somewhere, and um, yeah, and each term is not negative as well. Um, so this thing, this sum here is going to be less than or equal to x, but in particular that's less than infinity because s converges to x over 1 minus x, okay? So we know that this thing here converges. Now I claim that that's a contradiction and perhaps you can see why straight away and there's a few ways to prove this uh, because this thing here grows like the harmonic series. As you can tell, this looks very similar to the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 1 over i but we're just multiplying by some constant and then we've got a plus 1 there. Um, but to prove that it uh, diverges, I'm just going to use the limit comparison test. I'm not going to prove that today. I'm just going to state it, but if we have sequences a n and b n, where b n, so if we have sequences a n and b n, with a n greater than or equal to zero for each n, and b n strictly greater than zero, then, and also, sorry, the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n is finite and non-zero, uh, then... Uh, a n and the sum of a n equals uh, behaves the same as sum of b n. Sorry about the handwriting there. Um, so in other words, if these conditions are met, then if a n the sum of a n converges, then the sum of b n converges. And similarly, if the sum of a n diverges, then the sum of b n converges. So in this case, I'm going to be using a n equals this thing here, uh, so 1 over 1 plus n times p1 all the way up to p capital N, and then I'm going to be using bn is 1 over n, so the harmonic series. Um, so both of these terms are non-negative, or, or positive, uh, so that condition's met. Now let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of one divided by the other. So the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over bn is going to be 1 over 1 plus n times p1 dot 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 all the way up to pn, all divided by 1 over n, and you can convince yourself that that thing there is 1 over p1 times dot 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 all the way up to pn, squeeze it in there, but that number there is certainly between 0 and infinity, so the last thing, so then uh, the conditions are met and we conclude this, so the sum of an, so this sum here behaves the same as uh, this sum here, the harmonic series, so and we know the harmonic series diverges, so that means this thing here diverges, but then that contradicts the fact that it's less than infinity, 
So we finally arrived at our contradiction. And thus, the sum of the reciprocals of the primes must diverge. Whew. That was quite a neat proof. Uh, if you look at any other proofs for the sum, uh, the sum of the reciprocals of the primes, they use uh, uh, what I want to say is some higher level maths, but the only things I've really used is the fact that this geometric series here converges and the limit comparison test to evaluate this sum here. But you could probably just look at this and knowing that the harmonic series diverges, convince yourself or perhaps find some lower bound on this sum here in comparison to the harmonic series and show that thus this thing here also diverges. Um, but anyway, yeah, using contradiction, so then supposing that this thing, sorry, if you suppose for contradiction the sum converges, then that means there certainly is some capital N with this property here, and then we showed that this term here is in this expansion, and thus this summation here is sort of a subseries of this series here, and thus must converge to some number less than or equal to S, um, but then we showed that this thing here diverges, which, we, which is our contradiction. Um, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's quite a neat result and it's not as well known as the harmonic series and it's certainly not, uh, not as easy to prove as proving that the harmonic series diverges. Nonetheless, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. If you aren't subscribed already, please do consider subscribing, making loads and loads of maths videos for you. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.